Probiotics should be an important part of anybody and everybody who wants to increase their iron. Now, given that 50% of the population have suboptimal iron and about 30% have low iron, it's critical that you consider using probiotics and wait till the end because I'll give you the specific species that are the most effective in it. But with our probiotics, you may be causing more damage than harm if you're supplementing with just iron because it creates a state of what's called dysbiosis. So to go through it quite simply, gut dysbiosis is when the gut is out of balance. You've got too many of the nasty ones, the pathogenic ones, and not enough of the good ones. The ones that you hear about, the bifidobacteria and lactobacillus and saccharomyces, the ones you hear about all the time in your yogurts and supplements and in the media too. So this state of dysbiosis leads to oxidation, inflammation, which causes damage down in the gut. And when you've got damage going on down there, you can't digest properly. It's not going to function properly. The gut toxins, which cause poisoning of the gut mucosal lining or the gut barrier and the blood, and it causes the toxins to get into the gut and into the blood. And you also create an imbalance where you've got these certain species, bacteria, that love holding on and hogging iron. So if you're just supplementing with iron, you're probably increasing bacteria like Salmonella, Shingella, and E. coli, which we call them pathogenic bacteria. It's good to have them in a small number, but the more iron you supplement with, the higher it pushes those up because they're the iron hogging bacteria. They love holding on to it, and as a result, you just poop the iron out and you keep feeding the nasty pathogenic bacteria, which is what we don't want. And when you watch my whole program, I've got five parts to this in terms of iron. When you watch it, you'll understand exactly what you need to do other than just supplementing with iron, which doesn't really work very well. So we'll go through, and what this causes, this gut dysbiosis and all of these leads to damage or leaky gut. Immune dysfunction, because your immune system is literally run or coordinated out of the gut, or the vast majority. Things like uh, in, in irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease. And of course, constipation and diarrhea, sometimes mm, one after the other. So you create all these gut problems at the same time. Now, if you're supplementing with iron, you'll also find that that in itself can cause a lot of discomfort in the gut, nausea, vomiting, and of course, these conditions. And of course, that all leads to low iron because your gut isn't working the way that it should be, the way it's designed to be with this nice balance of gut microbiome. So when you take, literally, when you take probiotics and the right probiotics are essential. So there's a couple of bacteria, one in particular, that is so effective at increasing and improving iron levels in the blood. So when you take the probiotics and prebiotics, that's the food to feed the good microbiome. So we're generally now looking at just improving the gut microbiome. You get bring it back to gut homeostasis, a balance microorganisms in your gut. Decrease inflammation, oxidation, increase gut repair, and increase gut function. So then all the things, all the nutrients in your gut can then be carried through because it's all working. You've got a whole heap of different types of cells on your gut that get damaged and if they're damaged they won't allow the nutrients to get across and so you get this gut function and gut um, uh, repair occurring now this also leads to something called short chain fatty acids and if you've watched my many many videos on guts which i recommend you do because gut is essential to your overwhelming health without any doubt whatsoever it plays a role in everything from acne to asthma to cancer cardiovascular disease diabetes all of these conditions and more but when you produce these short chain fatty acids when the probiotics digest fiber and prebiotics so they break it down they produce short chain fatty acids and one of these butyrate helps regulate iron transport across the gut so that's one of the functions, apart from all these fixing up the gut and getting it working again, it produces butyrate, which helps with literally transporting across the gut. And it also, these also stop or, or decrease the iron hogging bacteria. So they, they, they start to push out the Shingella, the E. coli, the Salmonella, the other iron 
pathogenic loving bacteria and it pushes them out so it brings it back into balance so all of a sudden you are now getting a lot more iron digestion availability so it's it's ripped apart from any molecules that are holding it tightly and it's bound and it changes it, its availability so it can then be absorbed into the intestinal wall through the intestinal wall and into the blood and so you increase your blood levels of ferritin which is the main way of measuring it and hopefully you'll get your levels above 70 which is what the ideal the optimal level is a lot of people are sitting around about 20 and think oh that's all right 15 they're being told oh no you're not anemic yet yeah but two layer two levels lower and you probably are you want an optimal level to get the optimal benefits of the iron that can be circulated around your blood and that's greater 70 or greater than to reiterate iron supplements on their own decrease biodiversity in the gut and they decrease the lactobacillus and bifidobacteria. In fact, one study showed a reduction of 10,000 times lower levels of lactobacillus. They're the ones you're always trying to replace with your yogurts and, and probiotics and just through healthy eating. And of course, it increases Shingella, Salmonella and E. coli. So what does it do when you take the probiotics in particular the winner, above all, is Lactobacillus plantarum 299V. Excuse the funny name there. There are so many varieties and species that this is how they, the vernacular, how they describe it. And of course, this one is available in supplements specifically and with a couple of others like Lactobacillus fermentum, which is another one. But this is by far the winner. And nearly all of the studies now focus on the use of Lactobacillus plantarum 299v so make sure that's the one you're supplementing with specifically to increase your iron but in addition it's been shown to decrease ibs irritable bowel syndrome symptoms abdominal pain bloating flatulence irregular bowel movements and stop all that nausea and vomiting associated with iron supplements as well i'll show you that in just a moment but it also rebalances the gut microbiome, decreases inflammation, improves immunity, decreases in viral infection. So stopping or lowering the risk and potential of you catching a virus and getting uh, severe symptoms from it. It's been shown to increase mood and energy, which is consistent with an increase in iron levels. And of course, it increases iron absorption. Now, there are about a dozen or more good studies specifically on Lactobacillus plantarum, the 299V. And the first one, or I'll, I'll summarize a couple here. The best one, though, is really the 2024, 2025 ones. But in 20, 2015, they gave women low in iron some iron in a juice. And they gave them 10 to the 9 CFU colony forming units. Now, 10 to the 9 and 10 to the 10 are the usual numbers that you'll see on the probiotic packets. So just look for those numbers and it literally increased the ferritin levels by 50%, the levels compared to what they originally started on. So great study showed it increased ferritin levels compared to what the women were already at. Uh, in 2017, same results, women with 10,000, or sorry, 10 to the 10 colony forming units. And again, similar results. In a 2023 study, what was unique about this one was that they were 53 iron deficient female athletes. All athletes, if, the, if you're doing extreme events, because of the perspiration, the metabolism, you're losing a lot of your minerals, so they need to be replaced. Iron is no exception. And if it's not replaced, then you're more likely to have iron deficiency. Women, of course, because of menstruation, you're at increased risk of that. So very, very important, given that you're doing these big tasks, these energy demanding tasks, which of course rely on the energy and you're not getting it because you don't have the hemoglobin and other factors in your body. So they got 20 milligrams of iron for four weeks and it increased the ferritin levels from 8.2 to 13.6. Now that's still very low by all standards and you're aiming to get it up to 70. But remember, that was just four weeks. And at 12 weeks, they all reported increased vigor and energy, which is what you want when you're an athlete. In a meta-analysis in 2019, where they used a dozen studies, they were able to show that using Lactobacillus plantarum 299V specifically 
increase the ferritin levels by 55%. So just adding the, the, the probiotics increased it. Now, of course, it does all those other good benefits as well. And of course, there was another one in 2025 and it concluded and that one used 19 studies. So lots of information, lots of good quality studies in there. And it suggested that it increased the blood levels too. It didn't give a number or a percentage like the other study. Then when we go back to, I, I consider this the best of the studies because it was done in 2024 and they used 295 people who had anemia, recognized anemia. And they did the study for three months and they gave them 100 milligrams of iron as a supplement. Now that's a lot. And you'll remember I've said it, and I'll reiterate it time and time again, using iron on its own can cause problems. Using 100 milligrams of iron on its own can certainly cause that gut dysbiosis and problems I've, I've highlighted. So you, that's where you need to use this in conjunction with the program that I've got in part one. Make sure you check out the first video. It's got the whole program put together for you. And uh, there'll be a link to that below. And this uh, 100 milligrams of iron with uh, uh, 10 billion colony forming units which is what you would normally get in a good supplement with these in which you can get and what they found it lowered the gastrointestinal intolerances so all the people who normally would take that amount a lot of people would have gut issues uh, bloating soreness pain um, constipation diarrhea a whole raft of things so it reduced it by 70 percent the treatment discontinuation the people who continued on the treatment reduced it by 70%. So uh, in other words, if you just did the iron alone, only a few would get through the study. Whereas if you did the iron and the lactobacillus, it decreased those number of people dropping out. And then serum iron increased by 30% and transferrin, which I haven't mentioned, but that's the one that is uh, in your body. That's the main store in your body. That's the best storage of iron in your body, in your blood, and you measure, and that was up by 50% as well. So all of the studies overwhelmingly highlight the value of using probiotic lactobacillus plantarum 299V. And of course, now some other studies have looked at other probiotics. None of them have come anywhere near as being effective. However, you will often get combinations, and it's sometimes good to have the combinations because it helps rebalance that gut microbiome differently. We'll see. And these ones, lactobacillus um, fermentum is the top one, second one, come, comes in second at the top, and then down the rhamnosus, ruterio, and acidophilus. You'll see these in lots of supplements. You'll even see them in some of the probiotics. Another very common one, bifidobacterium lactis, HN019. Again, another common one. And the final one, which is a, a fungi, Saccharomyces boulardii. Again, you can get that as a supplement in there. All have all been shown to improve iron, but nowhere near as effective as, as the Lactobacillus plantarum 299V. Now, I've given you a lot of information. The critical thing here is to implement it. So it really means going and getting those supplements, going out and checking out part one, which will give you the whole program, including the Lactoferrin, which will be the next video, and how to put it all together to maximize the iron, because you don't want that damage done. You don't want long-term damage from using the wrong type of iron, excess iron, and so on. Check out my other videos on gut health and all of these other topics revolving around healthy aging and gut health. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, share the video, and tick all the boxes.